Hello everyone, this is Hybrid Account. Uh, you see here, if you haven't subscribed, you can do that for regular updates. And all right, uh, let's solve another example of process costing using the people method. So we'll take a look on uh, work in progress as well as fresh input, right? Yeah, something like that. All right, this is the question here. We are not that we are using the people method, not the weighted average method, people method. All right. During July, the following costs were incurred, as you see here. Yeah? We are giving material costs as well as conversion costs with units of materials. These were fresh inputs, right? Then at the beginning of July, at the beginning of the month, there are 300 units of work in progress valued as follows material 60% complete with $1,000, and then conversion cost 70% complete, $600 worth. At the end of July, at the end of the month, there are 500 units of work in progress, which were 90% and 20% complete for materials and conversion costs, respectively. Now required, value the output using the FIFO method. So I'm just going to take a look on how to solve such kind of a question, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is how we go about. So there are things that you will need to know first uh, beforehand, just like this. But let's first go and take a look on how you have, you have to approach this question, right? Okay, so the following are the necessary steps. First of all, ignore this one. Ignore this one at the top. Ignore this first. So uh, at the very beginning, uh, we should have uh, to deal with the below explanation, the necessary steps below here, right? Yes, these below steps, as you see them here, right? Okay, so first of all, first of all, uh, whenever you're dealing with such kind of a thing, uh, you have to prepare a statement of units. So it's something called statement of units. When preparing statement of units, you ignore the percentage of completion. So if you have 60 units, but they are 20% complete, just take them as 60 units completely, right? We'll see that. And then uh, you have to prepare a statement of equivalent units. When saying equivalent units now, we'll be considering that percentage of completion, right? And then after that, compute cost per unit. Cost per unit, actually, it means cost per equivalent unit. You take the cost in card, you divide by the equivalent units, right? And then at last, you value the output. Something like that, and everything should be over, right? Okay, so there is a weighted average method, but also the people method. But right now, I'm doing the people method for the following are the states, right? Okay, let's do something like this here, right? First of all, you should know how you should know that from the question you have two kind of cost: the cost incurred during the period and the cost of the opening work in progress, right? Okay, so when speaking of the FIFO method, you know, uh, we compare the inputs. We'll have the fresh input, but also we'll have the opening work in progress. So you do compare them by saying first in, first out. It means that the first to be introduced into the process is the first to get out. So fresh input and open work in progress mean that. Open work in progress are uh, entered first, right? Because it was actually processed from the previous period. All right, so what we have to do right now is uh, mm -hmm. you're saying, the first two needs to enter the process are the first to get out of it, meaning that opening work in progress is completed mm -hmm. before fresh input. So you make sure that all of open work in progress are completed before starting to process fresh inputs, right? It's something like that. And all right, we say that opening work in progress cost is related to those specific units, right? Because, you know, uh, at the very beginning, we already provided with the cost for opening with These were these costs here. Do not combine these costs here with these ones when dealing with FIFO. When dealing with Avico, we can co connect, com you can just combine them because there is an assumption we make, but right now we are on the FIFO method. So on the FIFO method, do not combine these two costs. Cost of opening whip and cost incurred during the period. Do not combine them. Never do that, right? And all right, you're saying that the current period's cost incurred is distributed over the work done in the current period. Actually, don't worry about that. That's what I'm just going to see sooner that rather than later, right? Okay, now let's go to question. Now, as we said, uh, the first step is to prepare the statement of units. And this is what we're just going to deal with, right? Okay, so when preparing the statement of units, it's kind of we are comparing inputs and outputs, right? You know, the units of input should equal, should exactly equal the units of output, right? So first of all, it's obvious that we have the fresh inputs. We are given the question. But also, uh, you have opening work in progress units. If you take fresh inputs plus opening work in progress, ignore these abnormal gains and losses, right? 
we expect to have some units at the end of the period which are finished goods but also maybe some units won't have been completed right the process would have been maybe won't have completed the units right so we also have closing work in progress but now you are saying that you can have something called normal loss if you have something called normal loss uh normal loss should also be part of output here so i have my normal loss here and then after that, you know, when the loss exceeds normal loss, you put the normal loss, but there is still an extra loss. So we usually call that a normal loss. So if you have an abnormal loss, you also put it there. there. And then in case maybe uh, actual output is actually greater than what you ex is actually greater than what you expected to have, you'd have an abnormal gain, and it should be on the left side, right? Just like this. But no, don't worry. From the question, you know no information is given about normal loss so if no information is given about normal loss because normal loss is usually given as a percentage of, of input right but it's not given so that's why you said normal loss is zero and then if normal loss is not there you cannot even guess about the abnormal losses and gains so the, or that's why they are also zero abnormal loss and abnormal gain zero so let's deal with the rest of the matters right so you're told during july the following cost to card materials a thousand units these are fresh inputs a thousand units then at the beginning of july there are 300 units of work in progress valued as follows open work in progress 300 units right okay so you just come here and say that all right i have my fresh inputs that are a thousand here and then i have opening work in progress at 300 just like this and then you can proceed and get uh, all the remaining information at the last sentence here we are told that at the end of july there are 500 units of work in progress so we have closing work in progress down here Closing work in progress, closing week is 500. So if you do compare the left hand side and right hand side, you will find out that uh, the total of the left hand side gives you 1,300, while the left, right hand side should be 500. So the net should be 800, right? 800 should balance the equation. So uh, the segment of units will have been completed in this way. All right, after this, you have to go to the next step, step two. Step, step two speaks of a uh, statement of equivalent units. Now we are moving from the segment of units to the segment of equivalent units because we are dealing with work in progress right now, right? Okay, so uh, everything prepared here emanates from this segment of units issue. So you have to be very careful in manipulating step one uh, to obtain the result of step two, right? Okay, so that's why, as I told you, opening whip will first be completed and then fresh input is completed. So here I said at start, or you can just say input. And here at the end, or you can just say output, something like that. All right, now we start. Opening week, we have 300 units. Finished good, we have 800 units, meaning that all 300 units have been successfully processed to completion. And so uh, opening week, 300 units will have moved to finished good, right? That's why you see here 300 what? 300 units. So it's obvious that. Uh, on the finished good, you remain with 500 units, and some should come from fresh input 500 units, and the remaining 500 units from fresh input should form closing whip, right? That's why you have something like this. Fresh input to finished goods, 500 units here, and then uh, fresh input to closing work in progress, then 500 units again, right? Just like that. So first of all, try to make sure that everything has been completed. If it hasn't been completed, that means that it ended up at closing work in progress, just like that. Okay, after doing that now, uh, we can just try to determine the equivalent units. How do we determine equivalent units? We're going to see that soon no? rather than later. All right, now from the question, you have to be careful. We are given separate information for materials and conversion costs. Sometimes you could be given this conversion cost is labor separately and overhead separately. So you also have to act accordingly. But right now here, uh, we're just given materials and conversion costs. And so you have to do two separation, make two separation materials here. As you see materials like this, and then uh, you have conversion costs. Just like here, I have the conversion cost seen here, right? All right, now to determine the equivalent units, first of all, you determine the percentage of work done. By work done, that means that you, 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 you take the difference of the percentage from the start of the period and then at the end of the period. You just take the difference and that, that difference in percentage, you multiply it by the units that you obtained here, right? In this column for units, right? Just like that. Right now, we start for materials. If we start for materials, and then we start here from opening work in progress to finish to put. 
Opening with not that, finished goods are 100% complete, while fresh input is 0% complete. So from opening week in progress to finished goods, we are starting with the first line, first row, opening week to finished goods. All right, let's go to the information of opening week. Opening week is here at the beginning of July. Materials are 60% complete. Well, okay, materials are 60% complete, so no big deal. All right, so just come down here and say, all right, materials are 60% complete to finish the good, to, that means to 100%. So 100% minus 60%, you get 40%. Then you take this 40%, you multiply by the total units of 300 to obtain 120, just like that, right? You do the same for conversion costs. All right. If you still go to the open work in progress here, conversion costs were 70% complete. If 70% complete, that means that from 70% to 100%, 100 minus 70, you have 30. So that's why I have 30% here. So 30% is usual time the total units that are 300. 30% times 300, you get 90, something like that. You just keep on doing that until you complete everything. So you, go, you come here now to the fresh input to finish school. Now this is practically it's pretty obvious, right? Because fresh input would be completed by 0%, while finished goods are complete by 100%. So 100% minus 0%, I get 100%. Always note that we take the difference. We do not just go to the output, right? Okay, something like that. So uh, since these were 500 units, that's why I just written, wrote here 100%, because it's 100% minus 0%. 100% minus 5 times 500, you have 500. Again, 100% times 500, you have 500. So everything uh, should have been completed in that way, is either is that, right? Okay, now you just go at the final step. From fresh input to closing whip. As usual, fresh input is 0% complete. So you just take the percentage of closing whip and you deduct the fresh input. All right, so if we just come at the end of July, you are told that... Uh, 90% was for materials, and then 20% uh, here, 20% was for conversion costs. So 90% minus zero, you get 90%. 20% minus zero, you have your 20%. So as usual, you have 90% here. For materials, 7,500, you have 450 like this. And then you would have uh, that 20%, 7,500, and you would have 100. Then after that, we just sum your units, right? So 120 plus 500 plus 450, we have 1,070, just like this, equivalent units for uh, materials. And for conversion cost, by 500 plus 100 plus 90, and you will have 690. So step two will have been completed totally in that way. So only two steps are waiting up, right? So the third step is the cost per equivalent unit. Now we need to determine the cost per equivalent unit. How do we do that in this world? How? It's simple. You just take you, you already have your equivalent units, right? For materials were 1070, while for uh conversion cost was 690. So you just need to determine the cost. Now you have to understand one thing, right? You know, you have two costs. Cost incurred during the period, but also cost of the opening work in progress. When dealing with the FIFO method, do not use this cost of the opening whip to determine the cost by equivalent unit. It would be used later, but not to determine cost by equivalent unit, right? That is only done when you're using the article method because of an assumption made there, right? Okay, if you, know, if you need to know about the uh, article method, you can just, just go to the playlist for uh, cost and management accounting. Uh, to determine on on the to, to read the question actually, which explains both FIFO and ASCO method in the same same example, just like that, right? Okay, so actually, uh, the units we have to use are these ones. Five thousand, the cost to be used for materials five thousand three hundred and fifty, and for conversion cost two thousand and seventy, right? Okay, so let's go here and we'll find your cost incurred. You know, uh, even this equivalent, if just take a look here. We, 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 we deducted, we, take, we took at the end minus at the start. That means we took only what was incurred from the beginning. For opening whip, that was present even at the beginning of the period. That's why we ignore those costs. All right, so you would have here yeah, this cost here for materials, and then you would have this cost for what? For conversion cost. So simple, just determine the cost by equivalent unit, justify it, right? 
50, 53.50 divided by 10.70, uh, we had $5 per unit, and then uh, 27 divided by 6.90, we have $3 per unit. So these are the equivalent, these are the costs per equivalent units for materials, but also for conversion costs. All right, let's go to the last step and value our output. How do we value our output now? Everything now, you will be doing everything. You know, each step is important for the other. Step two, Step one was important for step two, and now step two is important. Was also important for step three, and now step two should be important for step four. All right, we have finished good as our output. You know, we are value output, right? But also, we have closing width as output. I think you can see this from step one. These are output finished goods and closing width. We have these two issues, right? Finished goods and closing width. Now, how do we value finished goods and how do we value closing width? If you come to step two, you will see everything, right? At the end, which means uh, we have our output, you know, we have finished goods on two rows. Finished goods here, but also finished goods here. But close with appears just once. All right. If you start with this finished goods here, it's easy. You know the equivalent units for materials is 120. So you multiply by the cost per unit. And also you have conversion cost 90, you multiply by cost per unit. But just remember that this one was opening with, if you need to know the full cost, the value of the output, you would need also to include those initial costs for, from opening with, because opening with came with some costs, right? All right. So you just go and do the same. So finished good, we have two rows from opening with to finished good. That's row number one. But also we'll have from fresh input to finished goods, but no worries, we'll deal with this later. So starting from opening with to finished goods, we saw that we had 120 units. multiplied by the cost per unit for materials, which is $5 here. And then we had 90 units for conversion costs. Then multiply by the cost per unit, which is $3 per unit, right? Obtain the value. But now, you know, this one starts from opening with including goods cost only from the opening with. But remember that from the past period, some costs were already incurred, right? Some costs had been incurred at the beginning of July, which is opening with so materials were worth a thousand dollars, while conversion costs were worth six hundred dollars, something like that. That's why we just come here and add them up a thousand for materials and six hundred for conversion costs. If you add up all the things, I uh, would have two thousand four hundred and seventy just like that. And then you go to the rest of the finished goods. The other finished goods is here from fresh input to finished goods. Now this one comes from fresh input. Nothing had been incurred earlier, right? So no worries. You have the unit for materials 500 and for conversion cost 500 again. So you just shoot them here. We have 500 here. For materials multiplied by cost per unit, which is five, we already had it here. And then 500 again for conversion cost and multiply by the cost per unit, which is $3 here. If you do multiply them, five times 500, 2,500, three times 500, 1,500. If you add them up, you have 4,000. All right, so we are totally done for materials, so you have to add them up. This figure here plus 4,000, and you would have the total value of 6,470. We are done with finished goods, and then we match on with do the uh, closing work in progress. Now, if a closing work in progress is here, it comes from fresh input to closing work, so no cost had been incurred earlier, right? Okay, so what you have to do right now here, you just have to come here and say that, oh, equivalent units are 450. So 450, and then for conversion cost, they are 100. So we have 450, and then you have 100. So for fresh input to closing with here, we say that you have 450 units here, and then you multiply by the cost per unit, which is $5. And then we have 500 here, multiply by the cost per unit with respect to material, which is $3. And then you would have a total of 2,550. So this is how we do value the output using the FIFO method. If you need to know how to deal with the article method, you can just go to the uh, cost and management accounting and take a look at an example that illustrates both weighted average method, which is article, as well as a FIFO in a single example, something like that, right? Okay, so uh, to make sure that everything is fine, uh, you haven't made any kind of errors, you can just sum this cost. Cost of the output was this one, take this 6470 plus 2,2515, and then compare them with the cost for the input. Add all these costs, you will find out that you are having exactly the same, same value, right? So having said say that, you, you, you could presume that, oh, maybe everything was fine. All right, uh, thank you for everything. Thank you for watching here.
from subscribe you can just do that for regular updates thank you very much and then until uh next time